Hello everyone. I welcome you all for a two weeks online internship program on demystifying IoT security for digital world. Myself Santosh Rathod, Assistant Professor from Department of Information Technology. In this video, we will be dealing with the introduction to the ESP8266 or in other term, we call it as the Node MCU. This is a typical figure of the Node MCU board. So we will go in detail about the Node MCU board. The Internet of Things has been a trending field in the world of technology. It has changed the way we work. Practical objects and the digital world are connected now more than ever. Keeping this in mind, the Expressive System, a Shanghai-based semiconductor company, has released an adorable bite-sized Wi-Fi-enabled microcontroller, which we call as the ESP8266, at an unbelievable price, which would cost some bucks. It can monitor and control things from anywhere in the world, which would be perfect for just about an IoT process. Today, IoT applications are on the rise and connecting objects are getting more and more important. There are several ways to connect objects such as Wi-Fi protocol. Node MCO is an open source platform which is based on the ESP8266 which can connect objects and let data transfer using the Wi-Fi protocol. In addition, by providing some of the most important features of the microcontrollers such as general purpose input output pulse with modulation analog to digital conversion etc it can solve many of these projects need alone the general features of these boards are easy to use programmability with the audio id or the lua language it is available as an access point of station, practicable in event-driven app, API applications. It is having an internal antenna, and it contains 13 general purpose input-output pins, then pulse with modulated channel, the inter-integrated circuit connection, the serial peripheral interface, analog to digital converter, the UART, and the one -one. So these are the some of the features of this board. So now we will go into detail about the boards and its different peripherals. The ESP12E module. In this ESP12E module, the development board equips the ESP12E module containing an ESP8266 chip having the Stensilica Extensa 32-bit microprocessor, which operates at 80 to 160 megahertz adjustable clock frequency, and it supports RTRDOS, which is the real-time operating system. There's also an 128 KB RAM and 4 MB of flash memory for program and data storage, which is just enough to cope up with large strings that make up the web pages. The ESP8266 also integrates an 802.11 Wi Fi transceiver, so it can not only connect to a Wi Fi network and interact with the internet, but it can also set up a network of its own, allowing other devices to connect directly to it. This makes the ESP8266 node MCU even more versatile. The next is the power requirement. As the operating voltage range of the ESP8266 is 3 volts to 3.6 volt, the board comes with the voltage regulator to keep the voltage steady at 3.3 volt. It can reliably support up to 600 milliampere, which should be more than enough when the ESP8266 
decompose as much as the AT milliamp wire during the RF transmission. The output of the regulator is also broken out to one of the sides of the board and it is labeled as 3V3. This pin can be used to supply the power to the external components. The power to the ESP8266 node MCU is supplied via the onboard micro USB connector. Alternatively, if you have a regulated 5 volt voltage source, the V in pin can be used to directly supply the ESP8266 and its peripheral. Next are the peripherals and the input output. The ESP8266 node MCO has total 17 general purpose input output pins broken out to the pin header on both sides of the development board. The pins can be assigned to all sorts of peripherals duties, including the ADC channel, which is a 10 bit ADC channel, the UART interface, which is used to load the code serially, the pulse width modulator output for dimming the leads or controlling the motors, the serial peripheral interface, the inter-integrated circuit to interface to hook up all sorts of the sensors and peripherals. The I2S interface is if you want to add sounds to your project. It is beneficial that the ESP8266 pins multiplexing feature, okay, which the multiple peripherals multiplex on a single general purpose input output pins. Meaning, a single general purpose input output pin can act as a pulse width modulator or an UART or an serial peripheral interface. Now we have the onboard switches and LED indicators. The ESP8266 node MCU features two buttons. One marked as the RST located on the top left corner is the reset button used to reset the ESP8266 chip. The other flash button on the bottom left corner is the download button used while upgrading the firmware. The board also has a LED indicator which is user programmable and is connected to the D0 pin on the board. Next, we have the serial communication. The board includes a USB to UART bridge controller from Silicon Lab, which converts USB signal to serial and allows the computer to program and communicate with the ESP8266. Now we will explore in detail the ESP8266 node MCU pinout tiger. This ESP8266 node MCU has, has total 30, to, sorry, 30 pins that interface it to the outside world. The connections and the pin are here labeled with the different color schemes here. The red one shows the power, power pins. So there are four power pins, okay, the one V pin and three 3.3 3 volt pins. The V pin can be used to directly supply the ESP8266 and its peripheral if you have a regulated 5 volt source. The 3.3 3 pin are the output of an onboard voltage regulator. These pins can be used to supply power to the external components. Then next, the one labeled with the black one are the ground pin. The ground pins of the node MCU development board are used for grounding the board. Then we have the inter-integrated circuit pins. The I2C pins labeled with the blue one are used to hook up all sorts of the inter-integrated circuit sensors and peripherals in your project. Next, we have the general purpose input output pins. 
it has total 17 general purpose pins which can be assigned to various functions such as the inter-integrated circuit connection, the UART connection, the pulse width modulator, the IR remote control, LED light, and button programmatically. Each digital inbuilt GPIO pins can be configured to internal pull up or pull down, or they are set to high impedance. When they are configured as an input, it can also set to edge triggered or level triggered to generate the CPU interrupt cycle. Next, we have the ADC channels. The node MCU is embedded with a 10 bit precision analog to digital converter. The two functions can be implemented using an analog to digital converter. Next, we have the UART pins. The node MCU has two UART interfaces. It can be the UART 0 and the UART 1, which provides the asynchronous communication and can communicate at up to 4.5 Mbps. Next, we have the SPI pins. The ESP8266 features two SPI pins, which is the serial peripheral interface in the slave and the master mode. These SPI supports the general purpose features, which can include a four timing mode, then up to 80 megahertz and the divided clock of 80 megahertz and up to 64 bytes of the FIFO structure. Next, we have the SDIO pins, which call it as a secure digital input output pins, okay, which interface to directly interface the SD card. Next, we have the PWM pin, which is the pulse width modulation. So this board has four channels of the pulse width modulation. The pulse width modulation output can be implemented programmatically and used for driving digital motors and LEDs. The frequency of the pulse width modulator here is in the range is adjustable from 1000 microseconds to 10,000 microseconds, which could be around 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz. Then finally, we have the control pins, which are used to control the ESP8266. These pins include a chip enable pin, a reset pin, and a wake pin. So here, this EN pin, this control pin, which is the enable pin, is enabled when it is pulled high. When it's full low, the chip works at minimum power. Then we have the reset pin and RST is used to reset the 8266 chip and the wake pin is used to wake the chip from the deep sleep. So here we have dealt with the 8266 pin out diagram in details. You can ex also explore the different versions of the 8266 board. Now, next, we will be dealing with the development code and the ID that we can use to deploy the project. Here, we move on to the interesting stuff about the development platforms. There are a variety of development platforms that can be equipped to program the ESP8266. We can go with the Esperino, the Mungus, and other development as well. But the amazing thing is the ESP826 community took the ID selection a step further by creating an Arduino add-on. So if you are just getting started programming the ESP8266, the Arduino environment would be recommended beginning with the one of the well-documented. So you can also implement the ESP8266 project in using the Arduino ID.
Now, we let's have a look at how to flash a code on the ESP8266 mode MCU. So the prerequisites are you need an Arduino IDE installed on your system and the ESP8266 code with an USB cable. You have to connect the USB cable to the Arduino board and your system. Then in the Arduino ID menu, you have to click on the files and then select the preferences. In the preference section, you have to insert the mentioned link or the URL in the additional boards manager. Then you have to select the tools section and you have to load the board. As we have already studied about the loading of the different boards, you have to select the different boards that are connected to our system. So here we have to search for the board that is available here in the list. If it is not listed, then we have to add on that board. Now, since, this, uh, since uh, if the board is not listed, then you have to search for the node MCU and then you will find the ESP8266 by the ESP8266 community here. So once you find that one, then you have to install it. After the installation, you can select the ESP8266 node MCU that has the name as the node MCU. So this will depend upon the version of the board that you are using, which would be visible under the tools and the board. So as you can see here, it could be listed here in the board section. Next, that we done with the setting up of the ID and the board, and you can work on the example as well. Now, next is the application of the node MCU. It is used for prototyping of the IoT devices, low power battery operated application, then the network projects, and then for projects requiring multiple input output interfaces with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality. So these are some of the applications. So that's all for the introductory part of the Node MCU. Thank you everyone for your patience listening.